Hey everyone, Mr. Smith here. Uh, so these ice sheets that we have uh, in the notes, uh, their main purpose is to give you a chance to play around with, uh, try out some of these exercises uh, and things for yourself, and really kind of dig into some of the things we can do uh, with linear algebra. Um, give you kind of a chance to sharpen and hone those skills. Um, so typically when you're looking at an ice uh, sheet, what I'd recommend you do is you try the ice on your own, play around with it, see what sort of things uh, you can do, um, and then kind of come back to these videos for help and kind of see what's exactly going on. Uh, now, I know some of these ice sheets you really want to have a little bit of a lead-in, a hint example. Um, so if you are looking at it at one of these in the future and you're completely stuck, tune in to a little bit of it and then see if the hint at the beginning of the video can give you a little bit of guidance and help and determine what exactly you want to do in order to, to solve these problems. All right, so for this one, uh, you haven't really learned anything yet, except for if you've kind of looked at the lab already. Um, so what I want you to do is think of a number between 1 and 20. Got your number? Great. Now double your number, then add 10. Then after that, divide by 2, and then subtract your original number. What number do you get? I want you to pause for a minute and figure out what number you end up getting, and then once, you've, once you're done figuring out your number, uh, come back, and I'll see if I can guess what it is. All right, so hopefully you've all paused, tried this on your own, and hopefully what you've gotten is 5. So let me explain. So I don't know what your number is, so I'm going to use x. Your number. So whatever your number is, what we're going to do is we're going to have you double the number, times 2, so 2x, and then add 10 to that. Now that we've done this, we're going to have you divide by 2, and then subtract what your number was. So subtract x. So if we follow along with this equation, we can distribute the 2, so we have x plus 5 minus x. Those x's cancel, and we should get a value of 5 in the end. Alright, so here's a question I'm sure you guys don't know the answer for. Uh, what is linear algebra used for? So the short answer is it is the study of systems of linear equations and their solutions. So that's the easy answer. That's the answer that a textbook would want you to know. Um, in truth, most of our class is going to break down to being able to set up, solve a system of linear equations, and then determine what the solution is and what that means for us. But there are all sorts of applications that linear algebra gets used for as well. Uh, things like predictive modeling, so say like the weather, graphics, as we saw in our lab one. Google uses it to rank pages when you type something in the search engine, Google page rank. You also can use it on radiography examples. Those radiography examples are a personal favorite. We'll see uh, many more uh, in the labs. Uh, but then there's a lot more we can do with, than just those things. So there's a lot of things we can do. It's very exciting times. So in algebra classes, in high school hopefully, uh, we've learned how to solve some systems of equations. So let's review some of the things we should hopefully know. Uh, a system of linear equations cannot have exactly two solutions. So let's think about this for a second. If we want to look at A, A is saying that we there's no way to have multiple lines and have no solutions. So here, what we're doing is we're taking a look at some lines 
And in order to have a solution, it's where all of your lines meet. So for A, you could have parallel lines that stop you from having a solution. For B, this is pretty easy. You have two lines. They intersect at just a single point, and they keep going on their merry way. For D, it's possible to have two lines with exactly the same equation, and this would give you infinitely many solutions. But for C, this would require us to have our lines meet at one point, and then one to curve around and meet at another point. But at this point, once we've done this, we don't really have lines anymore, do we? We have kind of maybe a line and a curve, but this is not a situation that's going to come up when we're dealing with linear equations. You're either going to have no solutions, one solution, or an infinite number of solutions, but never exactly two solutions. So that word exactly is the thing we want to key in on there. Okay, so let's say we had a system of equations that we wanted to look at. So say it was something like this. Now what you could do, since this is multiple choices, you could just guess and check these and determine what the answer is. But that's less fun. We want to talk about substitution. And elimination. So two methods you probably learned in high school to solve these equations. So here what we can do for substitution is we can take one of our equations and solve for one of our variables. So y equals 3 minus 2x. Now what we can do is plug that in to our other equation. So then we would get 3x minus 3 minus 2x equals 7. Okay, so let's say we've done that. So distributing the negative sign, we should get 5x minus 3 equals 7, then 5x equals 10, and then x equals 2. And that should narrow it down for us, what it ends up being. But once we have this x equals 2, we can go ahead and plug that back in over here. So 3 minus 2 times 2, which will be negative 1. So C is our answer. We also can do something called elimination, where we try to get rid of our, one of our variables. So if we take 2x plus y equals 3, and 3x minus y equals 7, if we add these equations together, we get 5x equals 10. So 2x plus 3x is 5x, y minus y is 0, and 3 plus 7 is 10. And then from here, divide by 2, or divide by 5, getting ahead of myself, and x equals 2, and then can substitute from there. So we want to create a set of linear equations called linear system that has no solutions for our next problem. So notice that in example 5, what we did is we put all of our variables on one side and all of our constants on the other side. And this is going to be something that we see a lot in this class, is looking at lines and linear equations in this form. So what we're going to do is let's look at two equations, x plus y. This is just an example. Equals 2 and x plus y equals 7. Now, can x plus y equal two different things at the same time? I think we all know that that can't happen. And so because of that, we end up with no solutions for this problem. All right, so let's say we've got a system of three linear equations as plotted on this graph. And there's two variables for each of them, x and y. We want to know how many solutions this system has. Well, solutions to a system of equations must satisfy 
every equation. So in other words, we're looking for a point here that shows up on all three of our lines. So here, we've got an intersection over here, we've got an intersection over here, and we've got an intersection over here, but these are all of two lines. So if we're over here, this line up here gets left out. If we're over here, this line down here gets left out. And if we're over here, this line over here gets left out. So if we wanted something that solved all three lines, we would need something like this, where we have a single point where all three of them intersect. But for this system, there are zero solutions. All right, so the last thing we want to do is set up the following problem. So in this class, we're going to see a lot of problems that are word problems, uh, where we have to take some things and the, the uh, words they say, turn them into a system of equations, and then from there, solve that system and figure out what it is that we're doing. So I'm going to say just set up for now. Cross this part out. Uh, we can look, worry about solving it maybe a little bit later. So there's going to be three classes of green. One in, in which uh, th three bundles of the first, two of the second, and one of the third makes 39 measures. Uh, two of the first, three of the second, and one of the third makes 34. And one of the first, two of the second, and three of the third makes 26. What we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and create some variables for ourselves. x, y, and z. And with these variables, we're going to denote what our different classes of grain are. So this is going to be, x is going to be our first class of grain. Y will be our second class of grain. And Z will be our third class of grain. So let's create a system of equations. If we want to go ahead and read the first sentence, it says, Three bundles of the first class, two of the second, and one of the third make 39 measures. So three of the first plus two of the second plus one of the third equals 39. Two of the first plus three of the second plus one of the third makes 34. And one of the first plus two of the second plus three of the third makes 26. And so this would be how we would take these sentences and turn them into a system of equations. Now that we have a system of equations, note that we have three variables and three equations here. So before, on the previous page, we were only dealing with two variables and two equations. So that's probably a lot easier problem to try to handle uh, using substitution elimination. And you could get there using substitution elimination. However, we're going to kind of see in the upcoming set of notes this week that there's an easier way to solve this. And I actually think we should solve this at the end of ICE 1. So uh, until next time, uh, happy studying.